Hi everyone, my name is Emmanuel and this is Max Confessions. First, I want to welcome you to um, another episode. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for the comments and the likes on the previous video. We really appreciate it. Um, for those who haven't subscribed, please subscribe because uh, we're trying to build a very solid community, right? Thank you again. On today's episode, I have a confession that I find rather disturbing, but it's not my story to tell, it has. From the moment she turned 10 till when she became 20, so, so for 10 long years, every Saturday for 10 long years, her mom used a rather absurd technique to investigate or to ensure that she was still a virgin. It is not my story to tell, it is hers. So, welcome to the show. Hi, Emmanuel. Thank you for having me. The pleasure is all mine. Yeah. For me, I still find it very funny, but I'd like to talk about it, right? Yeah, please. I'm the first child, mm. and I happen to be a female first child. Okay. So, my mom would always, you know, say, oh, that she's going to be very careful with her daughter. She doesn't want anybody bringing home disgrace for her, blah, blah, blah. So, in essence, why right, my mom was very strict. Like, really, really strict. Mm. So, growing up, it was nice until I turned 10. And she told me, oh, that she feels like I'm growing into adulthood and, you know, very soon, puberty is going to start and she needs to keep her eyes on me. Mm. Okay, she's my mom. I trust her, right? So, mm. nothing serious. I didn't feel like my mom was going to do anything crazy at that point. Yeah. Not like I feel like it's still crazy. I just feel like, man, maybe that's her own rule. Okay. But I had to go through it. So every Saturday, right, in my house, as at that time, she would bring out my socks from school, okay. like for the whole week for me to wash out. Okay. So this Saturday, I was, you know, planning to wash my socks as usual. Mm. And she called me into the room and she told me. And mind you, then we were staying in a one-room apartment. So it was my mom, my dad, me and two of my other siblings. Younger at, siblings. Yes, younger siblings okay. as at the time, right? Yeah. So we're staying in a one room apartment. You know, the regular name is face me and face you out. Yeah. Sure. But we we're staying in one room. Okay. So my mom called me in and she's like, Oh, that she wants to tell me something and I have to stick by the rules because she's my mom, she knows better. And I'm like, Okay. She said she wants to be sure that I end up a virgin and, you know, I marry as a virgin, just like she married as a virgin. And so she said she married as a virgin. My dad confirmed that. Okay. She was a virgin. Okay. So my mom be like, lie down. I need to start checking you from now on every fucking week. And we, I need to be sure that you're going to be a virgin for as long as I can keep checking you. You were 10 years old. Yes. <laughs> what could they... <laughs> <laughs> okay let me reserve the things i have to say for now for now go ahead please so this is where it gets crazy uh -huh. she says lie down open your legs and wait for me i lie down i open my legs she goes out she comes back in with egg like one egg and a candle i it... remember this this picture vividly it happened for 10 years of my life. 10 years. Okay. She goes out, come back with an egg and a candle and um, Goya oil. We call it anointing oil. Anointing oil, yeah, like yes. the olive oil. Yes. Yeah. So she comes back with it and she's like, it's not going to pain you. I just want to be sure that this is how we are going to keep going on. And I'm like, okay, mommy. She goes in, wash up this egg, wash up the candle with water, dries it up. Then he tries to lubricate it. She actually lubricates it with the Goya oil. Okay. Now, this is where it gets weird. She kept the egg, uh -huh. you know. Now, goes in with this candle and says, oh, she's inserting this candle. If any day this candle goes in, that I am in hell. You know, she filled my head with so many crazy things like any woman that doesn't marry as a virgin is a mistake. Any woman that, you know, that gets this virgin before meeting her, her husband is not going to make heaven and you know she she kept putting all of these ideas in my head and i'm like okay so she lubricates this candle and she you know tries to put it in okay like gently and all of that and it's crazy I, for me i feel like she felt like it was just going to sting you it's not going in completely yeah so 
she you know the way the candle is there's yes, a wax like she it cut, has the edge yes like the edge that with yes, the stick like yes, the small the, yes yeah. so she cuts that off okay and she puts it then she sees it she, she brings it out and shows me and say because i am a virgin i can't it can't even go beyond this part the, yeah so she's like that is how it's going to be we're going to have a measurement for it so any day it goes way over that somebody's beginning to touch you somebody you know doing things to you normally it takes like about one minute there about she doesn't really take so much time right okay then that happened the first time and it was weird to be very honest with you i'm having palpitations sitting here and listening to this this is me a full-blown adult listening to you say this thing and i'm in my head i'm thinking of my younger sisters Mm -hmm. And I can't resolve it. Like, it doesn't make sense. I can't even imagine my daughter going through this process. So I'm trying to understand, where was this coming from? Like, did you give off any sort of vibe at that age that prompted this? Or was it her own experience that she was transferring to you? So personally, I feel like she just, you know projected all of her past experience growing up things she had seen and she just projected on projected all of it on me i felt like she wanted to be very careful because even at that time my mom doesn't she she like she's a sit at home kind of wife okay you know so you're not allowed to it's not like when you call her from school you're going anywhere she's there she helps with the homework she does the chores you know yeah real full housewife so Mm -hmm. Her eyes are like on you to the only yeah. time she's not seeing you is when you're in school. Did you revolt at any point? No. So you stuck it out yes. for, for 10 years? I was, I was used to it. Well, what would be your explanation? The moment you act weird, she's already believing that you're doing something you're not supposed to be doing. So just let her do what she wants to do. When I started to see my period, she didn't stop. I thought, oh, now I started to see my period. My mom was going to, you know, so stop. So even on days when you were in your period and yes. you fell on a Saturday, she would still perform yes. this thing? Yes. Did it traumatize you as a kid? Oh, yes, it did. Mm-hmm. It did. And because she was being too careful, yeah. I was getting too curious. I wanted to know what was that virginity all about. I wanted to break it so that nobody gets to check me anytime. So my seniors in school were, there was this particular senior I had that was always, anytime I see him, I'm always daydreaming that he's doing something to me. As at that time, I didn't know what sex was. I didn't know whatever it was, but I just knew that I was feeling something different. And this was when, just two. Okay. I just know, oh, when I see this guy, I feel something different. I'm craving for him to be around me. Mm. And this person was like in SS3. Mm. My my friends in school will be talking about it. My mom, when I go home, she'll be preaching about it every Saturday. I was like, what's that thing? What's so special about this thing? So the more she tried to talk you out of it, or she tried to like lead you in the path of righteousness, mm-hmm. you were more and more curious to find out what this was Yes, because I'm like, what is that reason that will make you always want to check me? Is it that bad? And I think that's something that a lot of African parents have done. Yes. And they don't know how damaging it is to I the swear. psyche of a child. I swear down. So part of the reasons why we're having this conversation, or so I decided to create this show, is, I mean, it's a learning curve mm-hmm. for both already existing parents and new parents to mm-hmm. actually know what to do or what exactly. to do and what not to do when it comes to kids. Because we are talking about something that happened to you, what, 10, 15 years ago? Mm-hmm. Yeah and you're a product of those experiences so this is where the twist comes in Mm. hi i just want to take a minute to ask you to please subscribe to the channel subscribing to the channel is one major way that you encourage the work that we do and to tell us that you really appreciate the effort that we put in so please subscribe to the channel just click on the subscribe button now please thank you so this is where the twist comes in Mm. After secondary school, she kept on doing this thing. Little did my mom know that as much as she was checking mm. and doing, the only thing I wasn't doing was I wasn't, I didn't let a dig get through Inside me. Inside you, okay. But I had ideas of all of these things. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. I'm very thinking about this. It's just crazy. Please, go ahead. So one day, she went to show up as usual. And this was like, 
the week when you just finish your work, you know, okay. so there's nothing else to do or just at home. So we had a wardrobe in my house as at that time. On top of this wardrobe, she had her boxes, you know, she had like two boxes of clothes on top of the wardrobe. Mm. So I brought this box down. Now, under this box, while I brought it down, this um, DVD, um, whatever, fell off from it. Like Okay, like the DVD disc? Yeah, like the, the, disc the paper, oh, the okay, disc. Okay, and you okay. know, remember all yeah, the signs? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a leaflet yes. that is usually in. Then yes. there'll be in like a big pack, then the disc will yes, be in. Yes. So that was what fell out. I didn't even see the disc. Lo and behold, it was porn. All you saw was the leaflet? Yes. Not the disc Not itself. the disc. But, you know, now, porn. So, the, the, the graphics on this thing was 18 rated. I'm not supposed to be seeing it. Yeah. And I'm seeing it. And I'm like, what's this doing here? As I picked it up, I just saw the dicks. And I'm like, oh, okay. Flip this thing back. And I'm seeing different kinds of porn. How old were you at this point? 15, yeah. 15? Yes. So, what did you do when you... When you so, started? I was surprised. Like, what's this doing here? I took these dicks. Yeah. Played it, and lo and behold, it was porn, right? Was that your first time of watching porn? So it was my first time of officially watching it, but I had seen clips okay. from like my classmates, from classmates yes, and all of that. But I, I wouldn't watch. So when you put it, when you put these dicks, it now shows selections for yeah. you. So you have to select the one that you actually want to watch at the time. Yes. So I selected the first one. I can still remember my first porn. Amanda's Diary. <laughs> Amanda's Diary was my first porn to watch, so I played it. Then I started watching. And I enjoyed everything that I was watching. I was still a virgin. I didn't have an idea of it, but I just know that down there, there was this tingling was feeling that I, yeah. that I could not just explain. Mm. I watched like the first three scenes. I had to take it off because I was cautious of what if they take the light. So if they take the light, the disc will be stuck in the player. Yeah. And there's no way for you to bring it out until the light yes. comes back. You know, I, I had to take it off, put it back where I saw it, fix mm. the whole house, mm. then go meet my mom in the shop. But throughout that day, I wasn't myself. I just kept thinking of it. I just kept thinking of the scenes that I watched. I kept imagining things. You kept imagining Amanda's dad. Yes. I kept imagining it. I kept... And every time I thought about it, I just loved the feeling that I had. Then I had a friend in our compound then. We we're like age mates, but he's the guy. So I confided in him and I told him, and I'm like, I ah, see what I saw. Oh, where did you get it? I said, somebody brought it to school. I didn't want to say he was in my house. And he's like, oh, okay, that should play it. Then I played it. Then we started watching. So ever since I started watching Amanda's Diary, Amanda's Diary was the only thing I was watching on that selection. So you still watch this Amanda's Diary till date? Yes, I do. So... We start watching this together. Mm. Now, this is it. I'm inside my house. He's at the net. Okay. You know, the curtain is open. So, he's at the net. He's outside. From... Is there a particular reason why he's outside and you're so inside? he's outside to be watching if anybody's coming. I'm oh, in... so he's <laughs> mounting guard. Like yes. Mount... Oh, okay. So, he's watching. I'm in. And from the net, I can see his erection. And that thing just excited the whole shit out of me. Was that the first time of you yes. coming that close to seeing a man in erection? Yes. So, in my head, I'm like, oh, so this thing actually happened. Yeah. You know, he tried convincing me to let him come in and all of that. And true to God, I did let him come in. You did let him come in? Yes. I let him come in. Mm. Everything they were doing, aside from the penetration, I was eager to try it out. And started kissing... And he started touching me. Was that your first time yes. kissing? Yes. That was my first time doing anything sensual. And before I knew what happened, my panties were off. His mouth was down in my vagina and I enjoyed everything that he was doing. He ate you out? Yes. Completely. So it got to a scene in Amanda's diary where it happened. And he said... So was, basically you guys were watching this pornography and replicating what yes, you saw. But the only thing we were not doing was, was penetration. penetration. Yeah. In the process, Nepal not to delight. <laughs> hello apologies for interrupting your watch but as a community we need the engagements to grow so as you're enjoying this episode please like this video and also leave a comment and if you're feeling extra generous kindly subscribe to the channel thank you let's so, keep going and you just dawned on me like okay you're gone. So what did you do? 
I, you know, unplug the DVD, put it inside, pull it back, start running around. And now, as at that time, you know, this electrical shop, but this yes. kiosk that you have electrical people. Cell bulbs and Yes, I know. I took it to them. Please help me to unlock I want to remove something. What do you want to remove? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my cartoon. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I can picture that moment. <laughs> So, so I, I can think, literally, I can literally picture that moment. It was crazy. I had to start explaining myself. Now, let me give you another gist. Now, on Amanda's diary, what is on the paper is what is on the discs. The moment the disc comes out, anybody that is losing it would see, will see it. That is and porn. they know. Oh, I looked at it. I said, okay. I didn't even and think. You were 15 at this point. Yes. Okay. I didn't even think of, oh, the discs. I just wanted to get it out of the DVD. Yeah. So they're like, what do you want to lose? I said, that's my, my cartoon. My mom said that I should not watch cartoon. If I uncle, please help me to remove it. <laughs> please don't tell my mom. She's going to kill me. Okay. So this man's shop, I decide there's a boutique. This boutique guy switches on his gen. I take it in. He said I should take it in there. I should plug it and I should just remove it. Then I take it in to the boutique guy's shop. Plug the DVD, bring out the dicks. Lo and behold, this booty guy now saw what was on the dicks. Your cartoon. <laughs> Your cartoon. Turn that to me. <laughs> I'm like, hey, this guy, you watch porn. Uh uh, he said it to the hair yes. of everybody. He came out from the boutique and he went to the guy that told him to go in there to oh, oh, And okay. he said, do you know what this guy came to remove? She was watching porn, blue film. And I see it's a lie that is, they just draw that in there. That is not what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so they threaten me, and they be like, if I don't let them watch it, they will tell my mom that I'm watching porn. You know, so I let them watch. Were you there with them while yes. they were watching? Yes. Lo and behold, it was porn. Then I put them out. I was the one that selected it. <laughs> I was the one that played Amanda's Diary. At that point, Amanda's Diary just had something on yeah, me yeah like i just could even to you now i just cannot let go if so I, let me guess you still remember the uh images like the scenes that you yes saw on Amanda's, vividly yes i still watch amanda's diary till date oh you still watch it yes so this bros these two bros is now mm. watching this thing having erection i just whenever i saw that erection it was like my home training they had wiped everything I and just, you could see the erection on them right yes, there and then. Right there and then. Then these guys come and they start touching me and you know, wanting to do things and I'm enjoying it. Like I am literally enjoying it. At the at this this, this point now in Amanda's diary where she was blowing the guy, she was giving him a blue job, then I go on my nails and consensually give this guy. A blow job. Was it cons was it consensual or were you just trying to shut them up from talking to your mom? No, it was consensual. I was it was the same vibe that came from the guy in my compound. So literally, I was wanting to practice everything they were doing aside from so, penetration. So basically, these were layers. You had passed the uh so let's let's call it layer one, mm -hmm. just for the sake of this conversation. So you had passed that layer where you watched Amanda being eaten out, and then your neighbor, uh, yes, age mate, ate you out. Now you were at second phase of Amanda reciprocating whatever it is that she yes, thought, and you thought it was okay for you to do that to the guys, yes. And you are telling me that it was hundred percent consensual. Yes, I wanted it. Who made the first move? The guys. I did. I did. When I see a guy with an erection at that time, it, it, it was like that erection was erasing all of my home, home training, training and yeah. everything. So I get touchy. To be honest, I'm not going to I'm not going to come on here and lie about anybody. Mm. Nobody, you know, tried to molest me. Mm. I did. The time I was supposed to use to rest, I was using it to explore crazy mm. things. Yeah. In one day, I got eaten out. That same day, I gave a blowjob. I, I couldn't scratch that experience yeah. off my head. Yeah. You know, I kept thinking about it. My mom would notice and be like, what's going on with you? Not so mom, I'm fine. So like basically you just zone out and you're yeah. thinking about stuff. 
I'm daydreaming. I call it daydreaming. Okay. So basically, I'm daydreaming and I'm imagining that this penetration would just go in. And I wanted to know what it felt what like. What it felt like. Yeah. Because if it felt so good, you know, having to have somebody eat me out, it felt so good blowing up somebody. In my head, I'm like, imagine how it will feel having a dick inside of you or something. The most painful part is the exposure came from the same source mm -hmm. that was trying to prevent me from prevent saying you it. from saying it. Yeah. And now you are experiencing things by virtue of what you saw mm -hmm. from this same channel. Yes. It got to the point where I now used to differentiate a good head from a bad one. For somebody that didn't know anything in like mm. a space of like six months, I was beginning to know different things. Was she doing the same thing to your sisters? No. You were the only person receiving this treatment. Yes. So when your sisters turned 10, they didn't get the same <laughs> At thing. At all. None of my sisters. And I have quite a number of sisters. How much influence did Amanda's diary have on you as a person and on your sexuality? Oh, a lot. A lot of things. Because from the onset, even before I knew what sex was, me watching it, I just wanted to do everything that I was watching. So everything you saw Amanda do, you replicated? Yes. What are some of those things that you saw her do that you actually brought to life? It got me exposed to the idea of gang banging, threesomes, they having orgies, um, sex toys. Amanda's diary made me like all of those things. At some point in my life, gang banging was the only thing to turn me on and, you know, make me want to get sexual. How many men, maximum at a time? When I was still in the world, like, I've had four men at a time. And you showed that offer? Yes. And I wanted more. I've also had, you know, threesomes, mixed threesomes. Two girls, one guy. Okay. Two guys, one girl. Okay. And among that, that we also opened my, you know, my, my head to be like, so I can also have fun with girls and yeah. not guys. So I ventured into it. So... You're bisexual? Yes. But for me, there's a balance. There's a balance for it. Okay. I don't like one and not like one. Amanda just opened my head to so many sexual ideas that okay. I have explored. I'm just a very curious person. That's just how I am. So basically your entrance into um into exploring your sexuality came from that very day that you stumbled on that CD. Yes. And you watched Amanda's diary. Yes. Do you think things would have been different with your sexuality if you hadn't seen that? Yes. Risk? I'm very sure I would have probably waited to be a wife before getting this virgin. I am very sure. Are there things that you feel like you could have done differently? Yeah. Okay, what I feel like I would have done differently was um, probably not explore some certain things. But at the same time, I've learned from them. What is one thing that you've explored that you... Probably looking back at, you'll be like, mm, I wish I didn't do this particular one. Being bisexual. Oh, really? I wish I was straight and liked just men. But Amanda's diary said no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt like from the day that I, I, from the first day that I saw that dicks mm. and didn't ignore and put it back, I mm. wanted to know what more was in that dicks. Curiosity. My days in hell started, started counting. counting. Because of that experience, do you have any sort of resentment towards your mom no my mom is everything to me but i, I just wish that she did some things differently she mm. projected her fears on you on me mm. she projected her insecurities as a mom mm. on me i wish she came out to me and we had a heart to heart conversation i wish she built some level of trust for me and for her yeah you know i wish she was open and very direct about some certain things and she didn't have to fill my head with lies and yeah. ideas so at 17 18 she should have just come out plain to say yes okay daughter this is this what is it what, is yeah do you this get this is about you know being i need you to let me know that you're going to be like this i need you to so she wanted me to be like her you know so basically my... the element of communication was missing yes the element of trust was missing yes. which communication would have would have built would have, uh, yes built and then that friendship 
you know, for a child to actually walk up to yes. the parents and have a decent conversation with them yes, you know, or to even open up was also missing because you were scared mm -hmm. of her. Yes, I was scared of the things she would say to me. I was scared mm -hmm. of the way she would act. I was scared of what if I say no, I don't want her to check me today and she beats me. Have you tried to have a conversation with her about those years to say, oh, mommy, you did X, Y, Z that wasn't really cool. Yes. And you could have done it this way. Yes. We have talked about it and she actually opened up what her fears was. You know, she had took her time with me and she was sure that if anybody was going to be a virgin until marriage, it was their choice. And I'm like, why didn't you give me that choice? Mm. Why didn't you make me choose that for choose, myself? Yeah, yeah. And she said, oh, you're the first that I had to do everything differently with you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. So, guys, it's been an amazing conversation. It's been a wonderful time with my guest. It's been fantastic. Um, takeaways from this particular episode. Parents endeavor to have a clean and clear line of conversation and communication with, a friend, uh, with your kids. Communication breeds trust. Communication breeds friendship. And when you have this communication, trust, and friendship, your child will be comfortable to tell you anything no matter what it is because they know that they are talking to their friend they're talking to someone who understands them as someone like you become their safe space their safe haven very important because look at it this way if her, her mom was a friend at the time and if her mom was sincere with these conversations um when she saw the disc she would have communicated it to her mom she would have told her oh mommy see what i saw and the mom would have led her on the right path but there was no communication there was no friendship there was no trust and look how how um, her life turned out. So it's been a spiral of Amanda's influence, you know, <laughs> from that very moment. And this is where we are. So a lot of things have happened with other people, other kids, courtesy of not being able to talk to um, their parents. I mean, people have gone through horrible experiences, cultism, drug abuse, robberies, just because they didn't have someone to talk to. So the importance of communication in a child's life cannot be overemphasized. And I hope we've learned a thing or two from this. Mm -hmm. So it's been a fabulous episode and I'm really, really glad I got to speak with my guests on this. Um, please subscribe to this channel. That is your way of supporting what we do here and we'll really encourage, uh, we, you're encouraging us to keep this going. So please subscribe, like uh, this video, leave a comment please we want to know your thoughts because we read every comment so we want to know what you think and also share this video to as many people as possible it helps us with growing the community and getting better at what we do so um really appreciate you tuning in um and if you want to be a guest on the show please send a message to us on instagram at uh, 1206.tv 1206.tv uh, the description or sorry the handle will also be posted in the description of the video so um send a dm and you'll invite you'll be invited to be on set with us so we can hear what your confession is right this was a confession what is yours see you on the next video